So good morning friends, my name is Dalit Soni and I welcome you all in this live session by Drishti IAS. So I would like to apologize for two things first, that there was this delay in this particular session and second thing is we could not come live on Monday and because of which we will be covering all the newspaper from your 6th January to 9th January today in this session. Okay? So there might be a chance that this session might be a little longer but you know uh, stay with us for that. So we will start with the practice question and then we will move forward with the important articles. Okay, These articles are taken from your weekend as well as Monday and today's uh, newspaper. Okay, So we will be discussing 4-5 articles. Okay, Other than these 4 articles, there will be 1 or 2 more articles. Then we will discuss the world affairs. Then there will be an article for your own read and then we will move forward with the practice questions and then we will wrap up the session. Okay. So now here you can see liberty versus rule of law. In this particular article, we will be talking about the Bilkis Bano case which has resurfaced again in the Supreme Court and Supreme Court has dismissed the order by Gujarat government uh, of the remission of the accused. Okay. So we will talk about all these things and how on which ground Supreme Court has actually uh, quashed this particular order. Okay. After that, we will move forward with the ISRO's fuel cell in space. Okay. So ISRO has gone for another test with respect to this fuel cell which is a hydrogen based fuel cell. Okay, they will be sending this to space and in order to go for the Gaganyaan mission, there are few important tests which are lined up okay? and in, this, uh, in which this particular uh, fuel test was one of them. So, we will talk about that as well. Then we will go for the GI tags for Odisha. So, there are 7 GI tags which has been discussed today which are important for your prelims as well as mains examination considering the cultural point of view. Okay? So, in the, in the mains also they can ask about particular communities or culture of particular communities. Okay, So, that is why this particular thing will be important. And then declining income inequalities. So, there was this article related to the uh, income inequality and then the K-shaped recoveries which were actually speculated that India will be going for a K-shaped recovery after COVID. Okay, For a while that was the, you know actually a fact and then now uh, the economists are reconsidering this particular opinion. So, we will talk about that as well. Okay. After that, world affairs and then we will uh, have the practice questions. So, let us start with the previous years, uh, previous class practice questions. Sorry for that. Which of the following reason was not been a subject of dispute between India and Nepal? Okay, so Mr. Jay Shankar was uh, on his trip to Nepal and they have signed various important uh, agreements over there. And uh, in that regard, we have discussed this article related to India and Nepal relationship and in the current and the current dynamics related to it. And we have dis dis actually discussed uh, some disputed area between India and Nepal. Okay, so that is why this question was there. They are asking that which is not a you know area or subject of dispute between India and Nepal. Options were Ratinla, Susta, Limpia Dura, and Lipu Lake. Okay, so as we discussed that in Uttarakhand area, we have this uh, Kalapani. <clears throat> Limpia Dura, Lipu Lake. These three area forms a patch, okay, which is disputed because of Kali River's course, okay, change in Kali River's course. That is why these three area, these three areas are uh, disputed between India and Nepal. Other than that, we have also discussed this particular Susta uh, River because of which there is a territory uh, which is also disputed between India and Nepal. Okay, this belongs to Bihar state. Okay. Then after that, considering all these things, option A would be a right answer because Rachin La is not disputed between Ch Nepal and India, it is disputed between China and India. Okay. So, let us see the uh, explanation here, map you can see. As we discussed these two things, Lipulek, Kalapani and then Susta in Bihar. So, here you can say we have Limpia Dura here and then there is Kalapani and Lipulek. So, here somewhere is the course of Kali River. Okay. So, that we have discussed. Now moving to the Rachinla part, here you can see uh, when this Galwan issue surfaced, this was the point from where they started doing this infrastructure activity. This has been mentioned in the book uh, that is uh, written by the uh, former chief of army that is uh, General M.M. M. Naravne. Okay? So this Rachinla is uh, you can say disputed territory or the territory which was in news related to India and China this dispute and not India and Nepal dispute. Okay? These are the other territories which has been disputed between India and China. Okay, we have discussed all these things in the previous lecture. So now let's move to the first article of the day. Okay, that is related to your uh, Bilkis Bano case, which was because of the uh, riots which has been happening, uh, which has happened in uh, Gujarat. Okay, 
because of which there was this case uh, of gang rape which resurfaced and there was some murders uh, uh, in this family and after that uh, there was uh, this inquiry and there was a course of action okay so we'll talk about that course of action and then we have we will talk about the recent judgment as well so what actually happened in 2002 there was this crime which has happened because of the Guz gujarat riot there was a case of mob lynching in which a mob has entered the, their house and they have killed so many people there were some accused okay there were some 12 accused which were identified in this particular case okay and then they were given after a long procedure inquiry appeals etc they were given a sentence uh, you know of life uh, imprisonment in 2008 okay after that there was also some appeals etc but we are not going into that the concern here is that in 2022 15th of August 2022 because of their good behavior in the jail they have been given this remission okay and they were set free early release there was uh, you can say there was an early release of these 11 convicts okay in this process there was another thing that in 2017 okay this person named Radesham Shah okay he has appealed or he has gone to the court with respect to the earlier release etc but then court has said that uh, that is a jurisdiction uh, wise there were some issues okay so here let's see in 2017 sc dismissed the appeal by two doctors and four policemen and then in 2019 sc ordered a payment of 50 lakh as a compensation directed by the state government to provide bilkis with the employment and the accommodation that is not the part of our you know uh, that is not for our concern and in may 2022 the convict radheshyam shah appealed in the supreme court against a july 17 2019 order okay uh, order of gujarat high court which has ruled that maharashtra is the appropriate government to decide on his plea of remission after he had completed 15 years of the uh, term inside the jail okay so they are saying that uh, there is this manual uh, according to which if a person is uh, inside the jail and he has uh, finished some 14 years of the imprisonment and they can go for uh, you know appeal of this re uh, remission etc okay or reducing the sentence okay so considering that they have gone to the court and then this matter uh, went to the court and court has said that this is power to the uh, gujarat government at that particular point of time after that there was another judgment which says that uh, where the crime has been happened is not the jurisdiction but the jurisdiction would be the area where the case is being tried okay in this case supreme court has transferred this case to the uh, uh, high court of bombay okay because for the fair trial they have uh, you know uh, to uh, to make sure that there is no political interference in this case they have transferred the case to the high court of bombay okay so now in the another judgment supreme court said that the jurisdiction would be in maharashtra and not in gujarat by then in uh, 15th of august uh, 2022 the gujarat government has provided a remission and set these people free uh, you know and they have said that because of their good behavior we are setting them free okay hold on so because of this uh, particular remission the victim of the case bilkis banu has approached the supreme court again and she has demanded a justice that why these people has been released early okay so that is why this case come back to the supreme court and supreme court has talked about it here supreme court has deal with a question of liberty versus rule of law okay here liberty when we are talking about they are talking about the liberty of the accused person here they have uh, gone for a sentence of 14 years and then there is this rule of remission etc so that is one thing and another thing is rule of law in the eyes of law everyone is equal okay so in this case when there is a issue of jurisdiction or you can say there is some kind of uh, uh, contradiction to the law in that case we can say that rule of law is not followed and in particular judgment supreme court has said that the order of the gujarat government is absurd or you can say abuse of power because they have not followed the rule of law here because they are saying that the jurisdiction is not right okay so supreme court on certain ground actually they have uh, quashed this particular order so let's see the ground on which supreme court has actually uh, quashed this particular order of gujarat government okay so here they are saying that there is a lack of jurisdiction okay gujarat government did not have the authority to consider the remission as the trial was shifted to the bombay as i told you supreme court has shifted this trial proceeding to the high court of bombay okay so considering that they did not have the jurisdiction to provide for the remission why this is because because of the rule which is mentioned in the crpc that is section 432 of crpc which says that 
the application of remission should be made before the government within whose territorial jurisdiction the applicant was convicted in this case that is Maharashtra. Okay? So, Maharashtra uh, courts has given this particular order of conviction of uh, life imprisonment. So, now Maharashtra government will have this authority to grant the remi remission. Okay? So, that is uh, one thing which has dealt with, uh, which has been dealt with by the Supreme Court here. And then there was another thing that is the misapplication of the policy. Okay? So, Supreme Court here is saying that they have uh, the Gujarat government has followed the policy dated back to 1992. Okay? But considering the policy changes which has made in 2013 and 14, okay, and because of uh, that particular policy of 2014, uh, policy of 2014, you cannot go for such remission because that policy says that no longer uh, this particular policy of 1992 is no longer applica uh, applicable as it was repealed by a new policy of 2014, bearing remission for convicts of heinous crime, heinous crime or crimes against women, etc. Uh, if there are uh, there, if the degree of the crime criminal activity which has been performed is higher in such cases or in the cases of heinous crime, you can say that such policy of 1992 would not work because there is already another policy which has been uh, which has come in 2014. Okay, so that is misapplication of the policy by the Gujarat government. Oh, again, this is a question of rule of law. They did not follow the rule. Okay, again, another than the failure to fulfill the condition. As I told you, Supreme Court has put this condition on, uh, or you can say this particular. Uh, fine on the accused that they have to uh, give uh, certain money okay here the convict hadn't fulfilled the condition of paying a fine paying a fine ordered by the court is, uh, which is uh, eligible for the uh, remission so for being the eligible for the remission you have to pay this fine which has not been paid by this accused and that is why you can say that this failure to fulfill the conditions that is one another ground on which supreme court has said that this particular uh, order is absurd and it, it is not according to rule of law so they have said that before liberty you can provide for the, uh, you can go for the rule of law because without law liberty is of no use that is one thing second thing is when we are talking about the right of the uh, accused here okay uh, right of remission of this accused okay, supreme court has said that accused can go for the remission application again okay so now uh, here, Supreme Court, what they done is that they have quashed the order. They have said that within two weeks, these people or the in, uh, 11 convict has to come and surrender to the court. Okay, So, that is one thing they have to surrender because they are saying that if they want to apply again for the remission, they are, are supposed to be in the jail. Okay, So, once they are in jail, they can apply for the remission application again. Okay, So, what are the future prospects for the uh, rights of the accused? Here, you can see <coughs> regarding the convicts future chances for the remission sorry i'm um, sorry for using the word accused they are convict okay so not accused because their crime has been proven in the court so they are accused okay uh, or you can say convict not accused possibility of reapplication as uh, the supreme court said that there is a possibility of reapplication in the right jurisdiction and that right jurisdiction is basically uh, your high court of or the government of maharashtra okay so here they can go to the Maharashtra government for their remission application again. Okay, considering they have completed more than 14 years of the imprisonment that is already given that uh, they have completed the 14 years of the imprisonment. Okay, then dep dependency on the state policy. As in the Gujarat, they have followed the policy of 1992, and then there was this policy of 2014. They, these are policies of the state government. Okay, regarding the remission, etc. Okay, so here, if we are talking about the Maharashtra's policy, since now case is with the Maharashtra jurisdiction, okay, so their policy rule will be applicable. Whether the remission will be granted depend on the remission policy of the Maharashtra, or as of the policy which is in place, uh, which was, uh, you know implemented in 2008 it's mandate that the minimum of 28 years of the imprisonment should be uh, you know uh, actually uh, the person should have gone with the 28 percent uh, 28 years of the imprisonment for convicts guilty of the crime against women and minor involving un sorry exceptional violence like situations okay so you can say that in a heinous crime which has been uh, done by a person against a minor or a woman they have to go for a 28 years of the imprisonment okay in as per the policy of maharashtra so when this co uh, case is now with the maharashtra government their rule will apply and they have to go for uh, this particular amount of years 28 years so let's see what is the fate of these people in maharashtra as uh, Maharashtra's jurisdiction, but that is uh, for later to decide, for the court and the government to decide. As of now, Supreme Court has quashed the order of their remission. Now, they, these people have to surrender uh, 
uh, in uh, next two weeks okay so that is about this rule of law versus liberty liberty of the uh, convicts and then when we are talking about the rule of law which is to provide justice to the victim okay now moving further second article would be isro test fuel <coughs> fuel cell to potentially power space missions okay so we are going for this gaganyaan okay in the next year uh, we are going for the unmanned uh, gaganyaan mission and then we'll be going for a space station uh, in low earth orbit by 2035 for all these endeavors uh, there is a requirement of the launch vehicle etc and there is one important component that is fuel okay so now so this particular organization uh, isro has gone for the test uh, in that regard okay indian space research organization isro successfully demonstrated a fuel cell that uses hydrogen and oxygen to generate electricity and release heat and water as a by product okay so we'll see the working of a fuel cell or hydrogen based fuel cell but right now you have to see that in this particular uh, fuel cell they are using hydrogen and oxygen okay and uh, when these two things will be used uh, the by products would be heat and water which are essential component of life which would be required in the space as well when a manned mission is going to the space okay so that is one thing the fuel cell uh, sent to space on fourth stage of PSLV on January 1 generated 180 watt power during the short duration test. Okay. So, on the first January, we have sent this expo set. Okay. So, the launch vehicle or the vehicle which has taken this particular satellite to the space, okay, that would be there for a month. It will perform certain tests over there. Okay. And one of the tests is related to this fuel cell. Okay. So now earlier what used to happen that once a satellite is going in the uh, space, there are various stages, stages of the launch vehicle. Okay. In that particular vehicle, the final stage when the satellite in, is in the space, that final space, uh, one, once the satellite is put, uh, then that particular uh, that was uh, you can say the fourth stage or the final stage of that particular launch vehicle would act as a debris okay because there would won't be a, any further use of that particular thing but now isro is using this particular module you can say that is pslv orbital experimental module okay so uh, once this satellite is placed this particular uh, uh, you can say element of this uh, launch vehicle would not convert into a debris but perform certain experiments over there okay for our future uh, space endeavors okay so this pslv orbital experimental module that is poem which would be inside the space and that would be there for a you know let's say one month or so and then it will be brought back to the earth atmosphere so that there is no uh, debris in the space okay considering that uh, with this particular model poem module we are going performing this particular test over that which is related to your fuel cell okay the ideal for human space missions the heat and water generated as a byproduct are also essential meaning a single system can meet the multiple requirements obviously one thing is that will provide for the fuel that is one thing second thing is that will provide for the heat and the water which are the byproduct of this particular uh, you know fuel cell okay which can be used in the space which is an essential uh, component of space travels okay now fuel cell designed by the vikram sarabhai space center this is important fact you have to remember that this has been designed by the vikram sarabhai space center is precursor of the future power system for the space station okay likely to launch multiple test vehicle missions and at least one unmanned space flight to uh, under the gaganyaan mission this year okay as i told you we are going for the various tests and this Gagan unmanned gaganyaan mission this year and then we have this space station planned in uh, 20 by 2035 okay so these zero emission cells might have used on the earth as they can replace the vehicle engines okay that is one more important factor here they these are having zero emissions okay there is no carbon byproduct okay so that is why that is environmental friendly as well that can also be used in the uh, you know uh, earth atmosphere or you can say for our general life uses etc or in the vehicles okay now earlier when we are talking about other th the platforms it, it was actually lithium ion battery we used to use okay and now here when we are talking about this the platform successfully demonstrate another silicon based cell developed by the vikram sarabhai space center which we have talked and it will present a low cost and lighter alternative to the current cells okay the conventional lithium ion batteries use pu pure graphic as an anode okay so in the lithium ion batteries we have this uh, graphite okay that is used as anode and releases electron to the 
uh, for the generation of the uh, power in this particular thing because uh, when we are talking about electric current it is basically a flow of electron okay so <coughs> while in this particular cell or in this particular fuel cell isro demonstrated using silicon graphite composite okay so they are using a composite over here and not uh, you know uh, just uh, uh, this particular thing that is graphite okay they are using a compo uh, composite like mixture of silicon as well as graphite okay that can accommodate more lithium ion in uh, smaller masses generating more energy per uh, unit weight so basically in uh, uh, you can say when we are talking about the mass which is to be used in this particular cell which will uh, which will be lesser and it will produce more uh, you can say electricity or the power okay the that is why we can say that this is cost effective okay the cell's ability to survive and uh, perform in the harsh environment of the space was demonstrated on board PSLV orbital experimental module that is POEM as we to, uh, told this was the component which uh, actually went in the space with the you know launch vehicle of Exposet and it is performing these tests over there while in the most stage rocketed upper stage remains in the space before dropping back to the earth atmosphere and burning up okay. So, this uh, most of the time this upper stage or the final stage will stay inside the space okay and it will be a debris because there will be no use and after that it will you know be dropped in the earth's atmosphere and it will burn up because of the friction okay but now space agency started using this uh, spent stages as a platform for technology demonstrations okay as we are doing with the poem module okay so that is uh, basically about the fuel cell when we are talking about the uh, working of this hydrogen fuel cell here you can see there is this polymer layer okay first we will see that they are using hydrogen gas and oxidant okay oxidant in this case is oxygen they are using okay or oxygen or air can be used but when we are talking about space we are using oxygen okay because there is no air so that is one thing so this anode here okay it this anode will have uh, this hydrogen uh, and uh, here uh, it will be you know you can say uh, uh, broke apart into H plus and OH ions okay. So, OH has the electron we need for the you know generation of the electricity and this H plus ion which is here because of the breaking up of the hydrogen and water this H plus ion will be uh, you know sent to this side by this layer of the polymer okay this layer of polymer will only allow this H plus ion okay this polymer electrolyte membrane is there okay which will allow only H plus ion to this area of cathode okay. So, now we have H plus ion, ion here then we have this oxidant from here so that is your O2 which will generate hydrogen plus oxygen that is water H2O. So, H2O is a byproduct other than that there is a heat which is also a byproduct okay. Then because every uh, reactions there are uh, either they will be releasing heat or they will be requiring heat in this particular reaction it will be a you know uh, exothermic reaction which is actually relieving some kind of heat okay. So, from here we will get H2O and then heat which will be used uh, for our space endeavors. Second thing is the unused fuel will come outside from this particular area. Second thing as I told you this will break into H plus and OH minus ion. So, here OH minus ion which is using this uh, negative charge this negative charge will flow through this particular circuit okay. So, you can say that this electrons flow of electron is basically the current ok. So, this is how this current will be generated or power will be generated over here ok. So, again I would like to tell you that from here they will send hydrogen inside the cell ok hydrogen gas. So, hydrogen gas here there will be H2 plus sorry H2 it will break into H plus ions ok. Then we have this oxidant which is getting inside here that is uh, O2 here from here the unused cell uh, unused fuel cell or you can say uh, cell uh, fuel from the cell which will come out and then the negative ions or the electrons from this particular area will come outside and becomes the part of the electric current ok and the unused or this particular H plus ion which will be sent to cathode by this particular polymer electrolyte layer which will let only H plus ion pass toward the cathode and at the cathode we now we have this H plus ion and then this O2 which will create H2O ok. So, this is how this hydrogen uh, fuel cell will work you do not have to remember all these details, but if you remember that there is this this is this uh, diagram that there is hydrogen gas oxidant 
and they are generating electricity there is uh, you know uh, you can say by product that is water and unused fuel ok. So, that was enough for your exam. So, now moving further uh, let us see the uh, you know uh, specifics of the hydrogen fuel cells. Hydrogen fuel cells produce electricity directly from hydrogen and oxygen gases along with pure water and heat that is basically are the by products you can say ok. It is an electric generator which works on the electrochemical principle ok as you as I told you there is this chemical reactions which are involved here ok as in the batteries as against the combustion reactions employed in the conventional genera generators ok. Uh, most of the time when we are talking about the uh, heat based plants which are going for the or the coal based plants all these things which are generating electricity ok they are generally going for this particular uh, combustion based reactions ok. Then when we are talking about this lithium ion batteries these are basically a little bit you can say eco friendly and then when we are talking about this hydrogen fuel cell which are properly eco friendly because there is zero emission of carbon second thing they are actually producing water and heat as a byproduct. ok. Now the ability of the produced electricity directly from the fuels without any intermediate step, uh, step renders them very efficient as I told you this is cost effective as well as efficient then with the water as only by product they are totally emission free ok. So, that can actually take uh, you know tackle the problem of uh, pollution in uh, areas like Delhi as well ok. But this is a far fetched plant now we are actually going for this uh, hydrogen based vehicles etcetera or the fuel cell. So, in the future we might uh, you know see such technology in the uh, you know common use as well. Now, moving further these features make them ideal candidates for space missions involving human where electric power water and heat are essential uh, since a single system can meet multiple requirements ok. So, that is a important factor or you can say uh, that is a plus point or positive of this particular hydrogen fuel cell. Fuel cell also possess significant societal application and potential as you told about in the earth environment we can use uh, such cells as well. They are also considered to be the most appropriate solution to replace the engine of various types like in the vehicles. A, which are in use today and to go for power standby power systems ok. So, as I told you for the earth system for our electricity needs for our vehicle uh, needs etcetera we can also go for hydrogen fuel cells. Fuel cell can provide emissions free transportation ok. So, that is a good thing for your environment perspective. Now, moving further the next article is related to Aditya L1 ok. So, uh, they have this launched Aditya L1 2 3 months back in the September and then uh, after that it was uh, supposed to be placed in the hello orbit on Saturday it was placed in the hello orbit as well. So, all this endeavor uh, has been happening as per plan ok. When we are talking about uh, this uh, Lagrange's point hello orbit all these things we have discussed in the last lecture ok. So, I will not go into details of all these things. So, these slides which I have placed here you can go through it ok. So, this is uh, uh, about the objective and uh, in which obje uh, orbit uh, this particular satellite has been placed ok. And then uh, what is Lagrange's point which has been discussed here and then we have this uh, hello orbit ok. So, we have discussed hello orbit as well now ISRO has placed uh, our satellite in the hello orbit uh, which, which is where we wanted it to be placed ok. So, that is a successful event and after that uh, despite placing this particular uh, satellite in the hello orbit we have to perform cer certain endeavors to make sure it stays there ok. So, uh, periodically we have to perform some time uh, some type of correctional activities to make sure that this particular satellite stays in this particular orbit ok. So, that is another thing here you can say this is your Lagrange's point and then this orbit around this Lagrange's point is basically your hello orbit. Generally when we are talking about orbiting uh, a satellite around a body we have a body around which a satellite will actually uh, you know uh, rotate ok. But uh, when we are talking about this Lagrange's point these are not bodies these are just a location ok from which you can say these are stable locations for parking a satellite ok. So, considering the earth and sun system we have 5 Lagrange's point where the gravitational pull of earth and sun, uh, sun is neutralized second thing is the centripetal force because of uh, this particular revolution uh, revolution etcetera which is also neutralized at this particular point ok. So, that is why these are you can say stable parking spots in the space ok which we have discussed uh, uh, in the last lecture as well you can go through this slide they are written in a very easy language ok. Now, moving further here we have also talked about this 7 specific payloads 
uh, okay how this will help us to study the sun and the phenomena over there all the processes of the dynamics related to the uh, you know uh, all these emissions from the sun okay so all these payloads you can give it a look you don't have to go into details of it but the thing is you should know that there is this uh, few uh, you know uh, interior uh, you can say division of the sun's surface and the sun's in the interior which has been discussed in this particular slide here there are in, uh, core radiative zones convection zones surface flows photosphere chromosphere and then corona all these things we have discussed in the last lecture you can go through it and then there was this uh, concept of uh, oculating disc okay so we have di discussed that particular concept as well okay now moving further to the next article that is related to a initiative that is prithvi okay so this initiative is nothing but to you know go for a simplification of the research or you can say ease of research in the earth science sciences okay so here we are saying that all the uh, outlays or the fund which has been provided for the research in the different uh, aspects okay which will be actually combined together and then this research would be combined together okay here you can see uh, cabinet notes for the prathvi vigyan uh, scheme that is prathvi scheme atmosphere and the climate research modeling observation system and services so here you can say they are going for the atmosphere as well as climate research then ocean services modeling application resources and technology so they are talking about oceans here okay then they are talking about polar sciences and the cryosphere research that is basically cryosphere or the uh, you know ice cap etc research of the ice cap etc so they are talking about that uh, cryogenic areas and then seismology and the geosciences uh, it is related to your earthquake etc or the interior of the earth okay so all these research and then research education and training and outreach programs okay all these things will be combined together and now the fund which will be given earlier actually for different sections now will be given for a combined all of these and these things now will be made inter disciplinary you can say research okay so here you can say that the government friday approved an initiative that will give uh, give the flexibility to pursue research and use funds allocated to five different sub schemes related to the earth science over a period of five years so now they are giving a flexibility uh, for these five uh, sub schemes okay to you know you can say merge them together or you can go for the taking uh, funds from one scheme and spend on another okay so that is that kind of flexibility is been provided in the, under this particular scheme ministry of earth science is uh, taking care of it and the outlay of 4797 crore has been provided for that okay all these aspects we have discussed in this diagram the prathvi uh, and it will allow ministry to award research project to overseas institutes as well okay so this is one important factor here we can uh, go for the you know allocation of research project to the overseas institutes as well okay we are looking at the earth system sciences as the one unit instead of separate vehicles such as atmosphere cryosphere geosphere ocean sciences etc so now we are you know actually combining or converging all these things together we are seeing it as a one unit so that the research would also be also be uh, you know uh, convened in a uh, one unit okay so that is there this will allow us to take up cross disciplinary project and even use the fund allocated for the separate vehicles together the scheme will uh, also facilitate ease of doing research okay so that is related to your prathvi or that is related to the research to the earth science sciences okay so that you can remember for your prelims as well it will be important that uh, uh, this particular initiative is related to uh, which particular discipline or you can say which particular area of study okay that is earth sciences okay now moving further <clears throat> so when we are talking about geographic uh, geo geographical indicators okay or gi tags okay so these are some kind of tags or you can say some kind of identity identity which is provided to a particular product which is originating from a particular geographical area and it has a distinctive characteristics okay so that is why gi tags are important for you can say all the local produce okay which has been uh, you know uh, under some kind of uh, you know distinction uh, characteristics are there okay and for the you can say uh, development of uh, the craft related to the uh, small communities over there which has been hidden for a long while now we are going uh, for this particular thing that is gi tags okay the gi tag is a sign assigned to a product 
दैट हैव स्पेसिफिक जियोग्राफिकल ओरिजिन एंड पजेस देयर इंट्रेंसिक क्वालिटी ड्यू टू द सैड ओरिजिन ओके सो द थिंग हेयर इज दैट देर शुड बी सम रिलेशन टू द पॉइंट ऑफ ओरिजिन और द जियोग्राफी ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया ओके नाउ द क्वालिटी एंड द ऑथेंटिसिटी ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट while protecting the interest of the local producers okay so now here we are trying to actually go for balancing the rights of consumer as well as the rights of the producer okay so here when we are talking about the quality we are uh, considering the rights of the consumer and when we are talking about this uh, you know geographical origin so basically we are protecting the interest of the local producers over there okay gi tags are awarded by the department of the promotion of industry and the internal trade which is under the ministry of commerce and industry okay gi tag registration is given to an area and not to a trader okay so basically here they are going for you know giving any kind of license to or the gi tag to a area or a geographical location and location and not to a trader if you want to trade in that particular thing you have to you know go for a license from the government to deal with that okay and if you are not getting a license license and you are an unauthorized uh, uh, you know trader in that regard you can be punished under law that is <coughs> geographical indication of goods registration and protection act 1999 okay so recently seven products from odisha which has bagged gi tag in the last thursday so we have uh, we are discussing all these seven product that is kapra ganda shawl okay this shawl is belonging to a particular community that is dongria kond tribe okay so now this name of the tribe is also important that is dongria kond okay it is a pvtg particularly vulnerable tribal group okay so that is why this particular thing becomes important so when we are talking about this uh, uh, tribe it is based in niamgiri niamgiri hills has been in news for various reason related to uh, you can say uh, that uh, environmental protection etc that has been in news uh, in odisha so they are belonging to dongria kon tribe uh, in the niamgiri hills of odisha okay so now there are few few facts that is one this uh, related to this particular tribal community second it is related to a pvtg third it is from the niamgiri and it is in the odisha so they can even ask that uh, this particular hill is located is which state etc so all these facts should be you know uh, remembered by you now when we are talking about the specific of this particular shawl here you can see the picture of shawl so there are these embroideries which has been performed on this particular shawl which is of different color that is red yellow and green here you can see it uh, in the picture and there are motifs which are uh, comprising of the lines and circles okay so lines circles and triangles you can see see there we have this circle or you can say uh, you know now uh, this circle is there and then we have this triangle and inside the triangle we have these lines okay so something like this it would be in your exam when they are asking about some kind of uh, let's say some kind of art form so if you make a picture of it like this so basically there is nothing what they are doing is here one side there is a circle second side they are uh, going for such lines okay so such things if you understand from your lectures and then you can go and write or uh, you don't have to be very aesthetic about it simple diagram like this would work and it will give you extra mark okay so that is about this particular uh, shawl that is kapraganda shawl okay that is belonging to odisha from the community that is dongria kond uh, living in niamgiri hills okay now second is your <coughs> langia sora paintings okay this is also belonging to a community that is langia sora community okay it is also a pvtg uh, from odisha we know that odisha has the maximum number of particularly vulnerable tribe tribal group living over there okay we have nearly 75 pvtgs and most of them are from uh, you know maximum number of them are from odisha okay now coming back to this particular painting it is known as itidal as well okay so that is itidal or you can say langia sora uh, paintings from belonging to this particular community this is traditionally adorning a uh, external of the mud walls of the residence okay where they are living the residence uh, or the mud walls of the residence residence they will be going for such paintings on the entry of this particular uh, residence or the walls of these particular houses okay so tra uh, traditionally adorning the exterior mud walls of the uh, residence or the houses the painting comprises white figures on a maroon background here you can see there is a maroon background and on which white figures are basically drawn over here okay they show their gratitude to their deities and forefathers pray for the well being of the communities most of the art forms or most of the 
फीचर्स आर रिलेटेड टू ह्यूम ट्रीज एनिमल्स बर्ड एंड सेलेस्टियल ऑब्जेक्ट यू कैन से मोस्टली दे आर यू नो क्लोज टू नेचुरल फिनोमिना ओके और नेचर नाउ सिमली पार काई चटनी सो बेसिकली दिस देर इज दिस पर्टिकुलर स्पीशी ऑफ रेड एंड ओके सो दे आर वॉट दे आर डूइंग इज दे आर यूजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर स्पीशी ऑफ एंड्स एंड दे आर गोइंग फॉर ग्राइंडिंग ऑफ दिस एंड्स ओके ऑन द सिलबट्टा एंड देन मेक सम काइंड ऑफ चटनी ओके सो दिस स्पीशी of ants are basically you know rich in various minerals proteins uh, vitamins okay that is why uh, it is said that they have this uh, medic uh, medical uh, use of this particular thing or medicinal use of this particular uh, chutney okay which improve their uh, immunity you can say okay so made by manually grinding the red weaver ants or on the silbatta grinding stone okay and these particular ants are found in the jungles of mayurbhanj or you can say simlipal simlipal is uh, Uh, a biosphere reserve in our news on map program we have discussed this simply pal again and again okay so this is asia's second largest biosphere okay so that is also important for you so this particular ants are find uh, found in this particular area of simli pal or mayurbhanj area okay mayurbhanj are also important because of the mines over there okay <coughs> so from simli pal jungle they get this ants and they actually grind it on the silbatta and make this chutney out of it they are nutritious food source rich in protein vitamins and minerals okay these boost their immunity and prevent diseases okay now moving further odisha khajurai gud khajurai gud you can say it made from the khajur or the palm dates okay uh, here what they do is they extract it from the sap of date palm traditionally prepared in trapezoidal form you can see here trapezoidal form okay and they are also called as patli gud okay they are dark brown in color they uh, taste different from the sugar cane jaggery oh, that is obvious because the, the source of or the you know raw material used for making these two things are different okay so odisha khajuri gud now there is another thing that is nayagarh kantai mudi brinjal or kante budi brinjal kante basically means uh, uh, th uh, thorns okay so basically here you can see that these are the brinjals okay so which has been given this uh, gi tag for their you know uh, uh, exceptional look as well as uh, when they are grown the plant has this thorns okay because of which they are insect resistant okay so uh, with the pricky thorns all over the plant this variety of the brinjal is known to be resistant to insects it contains more seed than the any other genotype of the brinjal and is famous for its relatively short cooking time okay local got locals got the brinjal from the nearby hills area and started cultivating uh, this particular crop as you know uh, nearly 100 years ago okay so basically it is a you can say wild crop or wild plant they have taken it from the wilds and then started cultivating it okay so that is your nayagarh kante mundi brinjal okay then then canal magji laddu okay so these are the laddu which has been made by the you can say uh, uh, this uh, chana okay so uh, from the buffalo milk they can extract the chana or you can say cottage cheese and they will actually fry it okay or uh, after that they will make laddus out of it so that is uh, dhenkal magji laddu uh, it is a sweet made from the buffalo milk chana or cottage cheese cottage uh, cheese said to have originated from the mandar uh sadangri uh, area okay so this area you have to look on the map and remember if you can okay the region become a hub of buffalo milk uh, production during the british times and chana was the third largest produce after milk and curd okay and it is prepared by drying all the moisture from the chana and then frying it and then finally forming balls of the mixture okay so that is uh, made of this uh, buffalo milk chana these are dhenka dhen canal uh, magji laddu okay and then we have this koraput kala jeera rice okay this is also belonging uh, species of rice uh, which is uh, belonging to this particular area in orissa okay so they have this uh, resemblance with the jeera or you can say cumin so that is why they are known as kala jeera okay so they have this distinctive color of uh, you know or you can say color of cumin or jeera okay so that is why uh, this this is called the kala jeera rice so that is also important for you with that 
all the GI tags of Odisha which has been given to Odisha on Thursday has been covered. So, there are seven tags you have to remember. Okay. One is Kapra Ganda Sol, okay, which we have uh, discussed and it is belonging to Dongria Kond tribe. Then we have this Langia Sora painting, it is also belonging to a community named Langia Sora. And then we have this Simlipar Kai Chutney, it is made out of uh, uh, grinding this uh, specific variety of uh, uh, ants. Okay. Then Odisha Khajurai Gur. Then we have Nayagad Kante Mundi uh, Brinjal. Then Dhenkanal Magji Laddu Koraput Kala Jira. Okay. All these things you should remember. Now, when we are talking about economy, there are various reports which are saying that GDP forecast they have actually reduced for India. That is, you can say uh, for uh, 2024 GDP goes down to 6.2. Earlier they have said that it would be 6.7 percent, and now they have gone for this particular uh, downside of this uh, particular number that is 6.2. Still, they are saying that India would be fastest growing economy in the uh, world we are, when we are talking about the uh, global perspective of the economy. Uh, they have discussed various reasons. Okay? So, we can say that there are some reasons which are uh, quite obvious that is the war going on in the Middle East, then all these issues in the Red Sea and then all the geopolitical issues related to uh, let us say Russia and Ukraine, uh, then there are issues related to the oil prices okay? because of which they are saying that there might be a down uh, growth that is 6.2 percent. They have discussed these things. GDP in the larger South Asian region grew by estimated 5.3% uh, in 2013 and is projected to increase by 5.2% in 2024 driven by the expansion in India. So, basically robust expansion in India. So, the growth of uh, this particular region that is South Asian region, they are saying that the driver of this particular uh, uh, growth in the region would be India's growth. Okay? So, that is one thing. India would be fastest growing large economy in the world. Okay. UN report said that the investment prospect in the China face headwinds okay. because of the property or uh, you know uh, real estate sector in uh, China there are some issues going on because of which government is also going for the investment but still they are saying that there will be you know, uh, you know uh, this uh, headwinds related to the investment prospect in China and that is why India can be an alternative destination. Okay. India is put, uh, at a position uh, or it is positioning itself as an alternative investment destination to China. Okay? So, that is why the growth of India you can say they are still uh, will be in the you know up, uh, up going direction. Then in 2022 foreign direct investment flows to India rose by 10 percent third largest host country from uh, announced greenfield projects. So, when we are talking about green field projects, there are the new projects. Okay? So, we can say that there is increase uh, of 10 percent FDI in the green field projects. Okay? Then increased government spending on the road, railways and the renewable energy projects. So, government is going for the or you can say there is a public spending on the various infrastructure projects because of which there will be a crowding in of the private investment as well. Crowding in means that private uh, investors will also go and invest in this particular reasons because once basic infrastructure is generated over there, then private investors will be uh, interested in going and invest there more. Okay? So, there will be a crowding in effect of private sector investment as well. Okay? Then when we are talking about the manufacturing purchasing managers uh, index. Uh, was in uh, contra <coughs> contraction territory from all over the world. Okay? So, when we are talking about the global economy, there is a contraction in the manufacturing. Okay? But when we are talking about the Indian economy, in the last quarter we have seen that there is a growth of 13.9 percent in the manufacturing sector. Okay? So, in that regard, they are saying that except India, uh, world over there is a contraction, but in India that is expanding. Okay? So, that is a good trade. Then slowing down or the slowing global demands, unresolved trade tensions, geopolitical conflicts are the reason okay, for this, you know, downgrading this particular number in the growth. Again, this is not uh, of much significance because India will still be a, you know, fastest growing economy. Okay? Uh, otherwise, when we are looking at the globe, uh, global or the world perspective, the economies are in doldrums because uh, uh, after COVID also they could not recover fully and then now they, there are these war related situations, then there are uh, situations related to export of these things because in the Red Sea we know that there is this uh, tantrum going on. Okay, other than that, when we are talking about the second route that is Panama, okay, which is uh, Panama Canal which is connecting the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, there is some drought like situation over there because of that water level is so low that uh, you cannot go for the navigation in that particular canal. Okay, because of which they have to you know circumvent all uh, the continent and then come to Atlantic Ocean. 
that is also increasing the cost of uh, export okay so that is why uh, there is issue related to uh, slowing down in the global demand unresolved trade tensions global political uh, geopolitical issues over there then war in ukraine sanctions on the russia which we have discussed all these things okay other than that when we are talking about the south asian region uh, there is the issues related to climate change okay these south asian region have many island nations and these all island nations are basically vulnerable to the climate change and the extreme events because of it okay other than that when we are talking about droughts in various parts of india nepal bangladesh okay all these things are because of the extreme events related to climate change okay so that is why we have uh, this uh, un report is saying that they are revise the forecast related to the growth prospect for india down to 6.2% from their 6.7% earlier okay so that is related to your economic section uh, related to gdp there was another thing that is income inequality okay so we will not go into details of it one or two things which you have to remember is that income inequality is been you know measured by the gini coefficient <coughs> so that is one thing okay here you can see income inequality captured through the gini coefficient of taxable income declining significantly from this much to this much okay so they are saying that taxable income is declining one thing is there now let's see uh, how they are saying that income inequalities are declining okay so there are certain indicators which has uh, seen by the uh, report in the sbi research report something so in that particular report they are saying that there are certain indicators which are performing in certain way we can say that there is a reduction in the income inequality okay so let's see what are those factors okay income inequality has declined in india with a higher tax base okay they are saying that first thing is that tax base has increased <clears throat> okay second thing is a shift in the tax payers from lower income to higher income bracket okay so the people uh, they are you know uh, going more and more when we are looking at the income tax returns when we are looking at the tax data we are saying that people are moving in the higher tax bracket okay so most of the people are having this uh, bracket of 5 to 10 lakh there is an increase in the bracket of 5 to 10 lakh okay so that is one thing okay terming the claims of k shaped recovery as prejudiced and ill concocted so here they are saying that we have talked about this k shaped recovery after covid okay now they are saying that this might not be true okay we will see how then <coughs> transaction of small firms into larger firms that is another uh, you know indicator they are saying that there is a transaction uh, small firms are you know getting into larger firms then they are also saying that consumption trends are increase uh, you know changing uh, there is increase in the uh, orders placed in zomato okay so zomato can be seen as a luxury uh, people ordering at home okay so you can say that they are uh, there are some delivery charges there are some taxes included in that so obviously a person if there is an increase in the you know income of that person then only a person would go for such services okay so they are saying that there is increase in the consumption trend okay because of you know increase in the uh, orders by the zomato and apps like that okay so that is some certain things which are saying that this is vanishing inequality okay now about 36.3 percent of the taxpayer have moved from the lower income bracket to the higher income bracket okay so they are saying that there is an increase of this particular percent you don't have to remember all this percentage all you have to remember the trend the trend is that people are moving from the lower bracket of income to the higher bracket of income okay then top 2.5 percent of the taxpayer contribution in the income declined from 2.81 uh, uh, percent in 2014 to 2.28 percent so when we are talking about the you know top class or you can say top uh, 2.5 percent of the taxpayers okay so their contribution has declined earlier in 2014 they have a uh, contribution of 2.81 uh, percent in the tax collections okay that has declined to 2.28 percent so basically they are saying that the upper class is now getting a less rich or you can say uh, the contribution of this class is reducing in the tax payments okay so that is one thing and on the other hand we are saying that the contribution of the middle class is increasing in that particular uh, tax uh, bracket okay so now the thing is the lower class is going uh, for the middle income or the higher income and the upper class is uh, you know little bit downside so this gap is basically reducing okay so when we are talking about the gini coefficient which was earlier when we are talking about 2014 it was 4.72 and now this has been reduced to 0.402 percent okay so that is a good trend okay uh, other than that 
income of 23 individual with the income of more than 100 crore was 1.61% of the total income okay so that is uh, what they are saying that the income which is generated by the top 100 people or you can say uh, top 23 people who are having 100 crore or more than 100 crore income okay so they have this 1.64% of the total income okay so total income which has been there in uh, uh, the, this particular category of the income this 23 people having more than 100 crore okay so that is 1.6% okay uh, that actually reduced to 0.77% okay so now we can say that this is also in the you know uh, trend which is saying that there is a decrease in the income inequality all these data are uh, quite difficult to remember all these things so you don't have to go for that all just all you have to remember is that the uh, number of people in the higher tax bracket is increasing and number of people who are paying higher or the contribution of the people from the top class or the top strata is reducing okay so that is about this particular article other than that when we are talking about this k-shaped recovery okay so here you can see in this particular diagram uh, there is when we are talking about this before covid we have we had this uh, stagnant growth and then after when we are talking about covid there was a decline okay which we have seen uh, and we uh, we can say that this is a true fact after that various economists says that different uh, section of the you know economy will go for a different kind of trend uh, in growth okay so they are saying that when we are talking about the services or the techn technology etc they will see a upward trend okay and when we are talking about the you know msmes etc or the you know hospitality services or the small uh, entrepreneurs all these things uh, all these people will be seeing a downward trend okay so that is thing which has been speculated by the people in when we are talking about uh, economist in after covid okay so here you can say that technology and the large capital firms will go for the upward trend and the small businesses and the poor blue collar job will be seeing a lower trend okay but now since this gap is reducing and these data are suggesting that we can say that there is uh, no such thing okay uh, this uh, uh, issue or you can say this trend of k-shaped recovery uh, is maybe a ill constructed idea okay now we are seeing that income inequality is basically decreasing okay so that is about your k shaped recovery and uh, this report of rbi research unit is saying that k shaped recovery claims are uh, you know can be a false claim or you can say uh, for now uh, or the current dynamics which is going on in the economy uh, that cannot be true okay so that is about this article all you all thing uh, all uh, you have to remember in this article is that uh, one thing is that Gini coefficient, so there is a, a good trend when we are talking about the Gini coefficient which is saying that there is a reduction in the income equality, in inequality and then uh, when we are talking about the tax collections, so people from the lower income are getting into the higher income and people at the higher income bracket which are there in the top strata are seeing a lesser contribution to the tax collections. Okay? So these two, three things you have to remember from this particular article, no need to remember any kind of data okay now moving further related to the health so <coughs> government has notified a new drug making standard after overseas that okay in 2017 there was this incident because of some cough syrup <coughs> and eye drops which has been exported from india okay which saw some kind of death okay 70 children in Gambia, then 18 children in Uzbekistan, 3 people in United States and 6 people in Cameroon, they have faced death, okay, because of which there was certain alarm in the, you know, pharmaceutical industries and the drug regulators has given some guidelines so that you can uh, go for, you know, uh, quality assessment, etc., okay. So now government has notified that you have to go for this particular thing within a implementation of all these guidelines within one year, okay. For uh, those uh, large capital industries which are having a large capital or the large industry you can say uh, which having a turnover more than 250 uh, crore, they can do it in 6 months and the, uh, if, a, if a company is having a turnover less than 250 crore, they have 1 year to implement this. Okay? After a number of overseas that allegedly linked to the India made drug, uh, Union Health Ministry has notified good manufacturing practices aim to ensure the quality of the drug made in India. Okay, So, India is uh, when we are talking about the pharmaceutical sector, India is doing good when we are talking about the exports. Okay, 
we are dependent on china for the apis but still we are uh, you know going for the export in this particular sector okay so <coughs> that is why it is uh, you know imperative that whatever things we are exporting is of good quality and considering this particular allegation we are going for this uh, good manufacturing pr uh, practices and now government is saying that you have to implement it in one year okay so quality con uh, this particular uh, guidelines or the you can say this practices will include quality control measures digitally uh, maintainable records okay so these records uh, will have this uh, you can say we can have this advantage when we have to go for any kind of records okay so if there is a batch which is not performing well or is of poor quality if we have a digital data related to it all the data which is maintained by the you know this uh, companies they can recall the product from the market because they know that they have sold it to which particular uh, you know wholesaler or the retailer okay so that is why they have gone for this digital maintaining the record system to recall drugs if necessary okay so this particular system will be in place as i told you uh, these uh, practices will be uh, you can say uh, at par with the those set by the world health organization okay so we are going for the global standards and other than that i have told you that if a company is having a turnover more than 250 crore uh, they can implement this within 6 months okay and then when we are talking about any company which is having a turnover less than 250 crore they have one month, uh, one year to do so okay why 6 months because when this uh, uh, incident happened in 2017 there was this draft which has been in the public domain in 2018 okay and government has shown their intention to implementation of the draft and because of which most of the larger companies which has this uh, capital to go for investment they have uh, you know tried to move towards the uh, those global practices so that is why they can do it in six months okay because they have the capital and the capacity to do it and for uh, the other companies which are of a smaller scale they can uh, go for the one year okay the union health military has put uh, in the place and up to one year timeline for implementation of those manufacturing standards but while most of the large pharma companies or the firms that export medicine are compliant with the who standards and the bulk of india's manufacture which are relatively smaller in size are are not it re remains to be seen and if these companies are able to put these norms in place okay so now they are saying here is that most of the capital companies uh, or the uh, companies which are having a large capital they can do it because they have the capital to do it other than that most of the india's uh, producers or the drug producers are small in nature and what we have to see is that they will be able to uh, you know implement all these things or not in the such short span of time okay so uh, these standards will include regular quality reviews for all the product uh, verify consistency of the quality and the processes uh, thorough investigation of any uh, deviation or the uh, suspected defect and there will be a implementation of any preventive action okay so all these things will be taken care in the manufacturing sector or the manufacturing process or if there is any kind of change that has to be approved okay so all these things has been discussed in the uh, this particular new drug making standards okay so that is why you have to remember that this particular fact you can remember or you can use it in sometimes in your mains answer writing because considering the uh, you can say uh, practices which is going on in the industry we have to ensure that our quality should be of a particular level so that our exports are more competitive okay now moving further international affairs as we talk about the india and nepal we have discussed this article earlier as well okay so i will not go into details of it mostly when we are talking about the geopolitical scenario right now uh, earlier as i told you the, uh, this country was going uh, you know uh, close to china but now they have realized something or you can say they had some kind of realization after that now they are coming back to india's in sphere of influence okay and we have seen some kind of cooperation in the energy sector as well as the renewable energy okay uh, there are some transmission lines which has been uh, you know inaugurated by the by jay shankar uh, s jay shankar in this particular visit okay so you can go through this particular article we have discussed all this in the previous lecture okay so since it was in the news so i have covered this and then when we are talking about this issue related to maldives okay so maldives president is invited by china okay and as we are talking now they are on the visit moizu is, is in the busing on the state visit to meet z so basically this was a trend that uh, former presidents of uh, maldives uh, used to come for to india for their first you know uh, state visit but this time uh, that has not happened okay because it has been seen that the moizu has this trend which is uh, uh, you know uh, close to china 
uh, that is why it is a cause of concern because in Indian Ocean region for the maritime security Maldives is a key uh, player in our strategy other than that the Sagar initiative or uh, when we are talking about that is the security and growth of all region all in the region that is also uh, Maldives is also important for us other than that when we are talking about the neighborhood neighborhood first po policy sorry neighborhood first policy okay from that regard also Maldives is important okay so Maldives uh, has this physical proximity uh, with the India's Lakadiv islands okay or when we are talking about Lakshadweep group of islands there is uh, nearly 70 nautical mines only okay other than that uh, most of Maldives uh, has some kind of uh, infrastructure uh, investment India has infrastructure investment in the Maldives uh, in that regard having good relation with Maldives is important okay so all these things has been discussed in this particular article which has been discussed in our previous section uh, as well okay so uh, with that we can move to the another article that is related to the uh, issue in the Red Sea we have discussed this various time since it was in the newspaper so I have taken it for uh, you know passing reference okay so recently there was another uh, you know uh, uh, ship which has been saved by Marcos okay that is Indian Navy's Marine Commandos that is Marcos they have uh, you know uh, saved life of some crew members uh, in this particular ship uh, that was a there was a message which said that there are some pirates or some people who has entered in this particular uh, ship and then uh, Marcos has performed an uh, you know operation over there and saved all those people and those people which were alleged to be on the ship were not there or they might have found out that there is a message uh, which has been uh, given to the you know uh, European agency basically so that is why they might have left but the thing is Indian Navy has saved all the uh, these people from this particular ship so we can say that India is a uh, first responder in the area okay other than that also when we are talking about this MV Camp Pluto, MV Saim Baba all these vessels has been saved by India from the attacks of Hamas okay so that is why it is important other than that India has strengthened the security patrolling etc in this particular area India has uh, gone for the four uh, uh, five warships in that area that is INS Kochi, INS Marmagao, INS Kolkata, INS Chennai, Salwar uh, class frigate etc they have placed in this region for the you can say uh, uh, you know anti-piracy activity as well as the uh, issues related to Hamas in this particular area okay so we have discussed all these things here you can see uh, this is the area here Hamas are creating hookers in this particular area okay all these activities which has been happening here they are happening in this area other than that this particular area of Abab al Mandap and the Gulf of Aden okay so uh, because of this uh, the transit in this particular area uh, in the Suez Canal has been actually hindered by the activities of Hamas okay uh, there was this uh, operation uh, 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 prosperity guardian which has been uh, uh, you know started by USA in this particular area okay and then when we are talking about the state of Hormuz this is important for our trade in oil with uh, these Arab countries okay uh, when this issue was there because of this particular uh, you know hookers in the uh, Red Sea area most of the vessels are going for the alternative route okay so that is from your you can say from Mumbai or the you know uh, South uh, East Asia to uh, you know circumventing this Cape of Good Hope and then to the Europe because this particular Suez Canal is important for the uh, trade between uh, you know West and East okay so considering this issue in this particular area this uh, uh, you know Suez Canal is not been used by these vessels okay other than that uh, the prices of the vessels has increases or the cost of the frigate in this area has increases because of this particular issues okay because of which transition cost has increases uh, because they have to circumvent the area <coughs> other than that insurance related issues has also be, been there because any insurance company is not going for the insurance in this particular area when we are talking about the vessels okay other than that if someone is going they are charging higher prices okay so that article is related to the same thing that uh, there is the impact of the Hothi attacks in this particular area and they are using this Africa's Cape of Good Hope because of this disruption to circumvent the area okay hold on <coughs> why all these things is happening because Houthis are supporting Hamas cause in that particular uh, region of Israel and Gaza Strip so they are saying that uh, if uh, Israel is not stopping all these activities in the Gaza we will continue to do that Israel is continue to go for the you know strikes in Gaza other than that there is one issue related to you know uh, opening of second front war at the Lebanon, Lebanon border okay because of the Hezbollah over there.
so all these things are still same in the international relations which has been going on for a while now we have been discussing it again and again so i don't think i have to go into details of this again okay now religious freedom us list china pakistan countries of particular concern okay so basically when we are talking about a religious toleration okay so uh, usa is going for this uh, particular list or you can say uh, uh, you know a report like thing the us has designated china north korea pakistan as countries of particular concern for engaging in and tolerating particularly severe violations of the religious freedom okay so they are saying that uh, when we are talking about the religious freedom that has been curtailed in this these particular countries that is china north korea and pakistan other than that they have said that they have designated burma china cuba north korea altria iran nicaragua pakistan russia saudi arabia tajikistan turkmenistan all these countries as the countries of particular concern when we are talking about the freedom of religion okay so all you have to remember is that uh, us has gone for such things this fact you can use in your main sense writing other than that i don't think they will ask it in the prelims okay now moving further for your read there is this article related to bangladesh elections and how it is important for india because uh, if there is a pro india government that is in india's favor okay so this article you can uh, you know uh, read at your own otherwise you can see our in focus program on which this article has been covered okay so moving further there is this uh, particular place where alexander the great was coronated or made king okay so now the uh, government here or the europe with the help of the european parliament european union they have gone for the renovation of this particular area that area's name is palace of aigai okay <coughs> a i g i this is a place which has been you know constructed or the made built by the father of alexander okay and uh, uh, his name was philip ii okay and uh, this is part of your macedonian uh, empire over there okay so if you want to remember this thing or read this article you can read this is related to world uh, world history but i don't think they will ask such things okay but for your general knowledge you can go through this article this is the name of the place that is palace of agai this much you can remember okay it is in the greece okay now <coughs> looking at the practice question for prelims so with that we have covered most important articles from your newspaper of last 4 days okay now you can have a look at the uh, practice question what best defines the halo orbit in space mechanics that is an elliptical orbit around the uh, earth a circular orbit around the moon a type of orbit that allows a spacecraft to move in three dimensional loop around a lagrange's point okay and then an orbit that orbits a planet in a figure 8 pattern okay so all these options are given you have to attempt this question and answer in the comment box okay now moving further uh, for your you know mains answer writing practice how have recent geopolitical shift affected the dynamics of india nepal relations and what key development have influenced their bilateral ties in the past year okay so you have to go through uh, your static part of this india nepal relations from the friendship treaty etc and recently when we are talking about the uh, geopolitics when we are considering the sphere of influence of china when we are talking about the release of new map related to kalapani limpia dura lipu lake all these things are the recent events which has happened okay because of which and then there was this uh, madheshi issue okay uh, there there was this formation of new constitution in nepal all these issues has been contemporary issues and because of which there was always a up and down in india and nepal relation but overall if we see india and nepal relations has been good okay they are destined to be good because we have this cultural ties as well okay considering all these things you can try to write answer for all these things how the recent geopolitical shift has influenced or affected the dynamics of the india nepal relations and what key developments have influenced their bilateral ties in the past years okay other than that uh, you can go for a way forward related to or you can say a conclusion related to the recent uh, uh, events or the developments which has happened in the this meeting with the uh, s jayashankar okay so with that i would like to wrap up the session i'll see you tomorrow till then have a good day thank you